Hello everyone, me again. I wanted to do a short video today highlighting some work that's going on in the Ubuntu community and letting you know how to get started in helping out. So a group of people in the Ubuntu community got together across a number of flavors of Ubuntu. So that's Ubuntu with GNOME and Ubuntu with KDE is Kubuntu and Zubuntu and the other flavors you may be familiar with. Uh, a bunch of the leaders of those teams got together to start a testing week in the lead up to the LTS release, which is at the end of April. And the goal for this is to get more people involved with grabbing the ISO images for any of the flavors or all of them and trying them out both in virtual machines and on real hardware. Both is important. And this was kicked off by uh, someone called Yusuf Phillips, who's been instrumental in driving this forward and getting everyone geared up for uh, doing a load of testing. It starts on April the 2nd and runs for a week until the following Wednesday. So that's this coming Thursday as I make this video through to the following week. And the instructions are all on this Ubuntu discourse thread, which I will link to down below. Uh, and I wanted to start off by just indicating how you might get involved, the first steps of how you get involved. So there's going to be a few of these little videos to talk about the the basic steps of getting involved with this. It's pretty straightforward if you're vaguely technical and some people who aren't super technical also get involved as well. Then it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, really, all you need is a computer. <laughs> you don't need much more than that. And an internet connection is uh, is ideal as well. Uh, but we'll go through all the details later on. What I wanted to talk about, first of all, is in this uh, post, we talk about the daily ISO images. And it links to a website called cdimage.ubuntu.com. And this is a server used by the team where the ISO images for Ubuntu are shared. I've got it open here somewhere. There we go. So cdimage.ubuntu.com has the ISO images, that is the ones that you would put onto a DVD <laughs> or a USB stick, or you'd feed it into a virtual machine and then boot from it and then do whatever's needed to test uh, that particular image out. And these get built, hence the name, every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, if there's something wrong with the first one that gets built, it might have software fixed and then a new image spun. Uh, but you can grab all of these images from cdimage.ubuntu.com and I wanted to talk about how you do that. It's really pretty easy. I mean, you can just pick your flavor. So, for example, I've already downloaded some of these. I can show you them. They're in uh, my home directory. I've created a folder called ISOs and I've downloaded some of these already. Lubuntu, Ubuntu and a few others. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. You can just navigate your way to one of these folders. So the official Ubuntu CD uh, is in here. I call it CD, but it's not really a CD, is it? The ISO image. Uh, daily Live. And then as you can see here, they're date stamped folders. And uh, you'll also notice that some of them are like this one here is 2020-03-28. So that was built uh, in the morning on yesterday. So right now it's the 29th of March as I make this video. And that one will have been made yesterday. But there was probably something wrong with it. Um, I don't know the details and it doesn't really matter, but someone clearly discovered there was something wrong here because another one was built an hour or so later on the same day. And so you can see the point one there. So all that point one means is another ISO was built that same day. That's all that that means. And the same thing happened today by the look of it. There was one that finished building about 10 a.m. this morning and then uh, something was probably found that was wrong with it and they built another version, maybe. I don't know the details, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, typically you'll want to grab the latest one. Sometimes you might want to grab an older one in order to compare something. So you might, you know, try something out and then find that it's, uh, something is broken and you want to go back and see, well, was it broken on the previous image? Did it just break or has it always been broken? So you can provide some feedback to say, no, this, this broke overnight. It was okay yesterday, but not today. And if you're doing this testing over a period of a week, you kind of get a feel for what's fixed, what's broken. You know, you start to get familiarity with how things look and feel and if things have been changed. 
you'll discover those. And so it's quite a nice exercise to boot successive images on each day and see how things are changing over the week. Sometimes stuff changes under the covers and you don't notice it. And it's, you know, there may be bugs that you don't experience because you don't uncover them on the systems that you're using. But often you'll find that the uh, software will change from one day to the next. Otherwise, there's not a lot of point in rebuilding these ISOs. So I've already got an ISO. Uh, this one here I grabbed and it's yesterday's uh, ISO. Uh, and this is one of the other super useful things. You can just go to the latest directory and find the ISO image and then just click on it and download. That's the arm image. Why have I, why is that the arm image? Is that? Oh, let's go in here. There we go. I want the AMD 64 one because it's a desktop. Um, it may well be that there was a problem only with the arm image which is why the arm one was rebuilt that's probably what went on there so you'll notice there's only arm images in here whereas the other one has uh arm 64 and amd 64 images so interesting um so i could just click this and download the new image but there's a better way to do this if you're downloading successively over multiple days you you might end up blowing your um your cap or your your um, bandwidth usage limit set by your isp and so there's a super useful tool called zsync or zsync uh which allows you to do delta updates so i'll show you how to do that you could if you haven't got any iso you can just click it and download it that's fine you can just do that but let's have a go at using zsync and it's a command line utility i don't think i've actually got it installed yet no i don't so i'm just going to sudo apt install zsync this is an option. Uh, it, it not only reduces the load on your internet connection, but also reduces the load on the CD image server, which at this time of year gets quite heavily busy with people downloading ISO images. Now, my ISO was in a folder called ISOs, wasn't it? Yeah, ISOs, Ubuntu Daily Live. So let's go in there, uh, Ubuntu Daily Live. Okay, so that's the one I got. Now, the way ZSync works is you feed it the URL to the ZSync file. Now, you'll notice here we're in this folder for the 29th. And remember, I downloaded my image on the 28th. So there might be a delta between yesterday and today. So I'll just right click and copy that link to the ZSync file. And then in my terminal, I'll do ZSync and then just paste the URL in there. And what it will do is see that there is already a file in here and it will download the delta between the two it has to calculate the delta so it reads the file that you've got locally first and then it will do some interesting mathematical calculations that i don't understand and then calculate what the delta will be and only download the delta so this will save you some bandwidth especially if you're doing this over a successive number of days so there we go it's downloading and you can see the percentage it's already done 99 percent because yesterday's image and today's image were 99 or so percent the same only a little bit was changed and so it downloads the delta and applies that delta and now i have a new iso image and the old iso image it looks like yeah so there's the old one the old one is dated yesterday and the new one is dated today now before i try testing this out it's also a good idea to uh, calculate the checksum uh, and some people choose not to do this some people skip it they believe their internet connection is super reliable and all the bits came down uh, brilliantly but it can waste time if that file happens to be corrupt for whatever reason um, and you put it on a USB key or you boot a VM and it turns out to be corrupt and then the install fails and then maybe you have a discussion with someone and say oh this today's image is broken and then you waste time because somebody else tried today's image and it works perfectly and if you've got a dodgy download then you know you're wasting your own time and you're wasting someone else's time in determining whether that was a dodgy download or not so it makes sense for you to check it uh, once the download is done and that's super easy too uh, you'll find here these uh, sums files md5 sums sha1 sums and if you want to do belt and braces you could do uh, both checks uh, but there's multiple sums files in here let's just pick the sha1 sums and what we'll do is uh, in my terminal let me just shrink this a tiny bit i will run sha1 sums do i have that installed no uh, command sha1 sums from deb core utils 
you know, is it Sha one sum? Yes, it is. Sha one sum. Nope. Oh. Yes, so I do have it installed. That's good. So all I do is Sha one sum and then the ISO image name. That's it. And it will do some maths that I don't understand and calculate a checksum. And what you're looking for is the checksum that comes out should be the same as the checksum on the website. And this tells you that, yes, this was successfully downloaded and it's not corrupted in any way. Uh, so, yeah, you just have to check. I tend to just look at the first like half a dozen digits and the last half a dozen digits. And if they match, you know, I don't tend to match them uh, directly. You could, uh, you know, go through every letter and number, but the chances of that is quite low. Um, so that's it. I've downloaded my ISO. Uh, I've cryptographically checked it to make sure that it's uh, the right image. And now I can start doing some testing. And the testing is covered on the ISO tracker, which I've covered in previous videos at length. Uh, so I'm now ready to start testing. And you can either check out the other videos or jump into one of these channels, either Ubuntu Quality on Freenode or the Ubuntu Testers Telegram group and start chatting with the other people who are doing this testing. Uh, so that's it. That's how you download the ISO and that's how you update the ISO when a new one comes out. It's pretty straightforward, not too demanding. Uh, and once you've done that, you should be able to move on to the next step, which is testing. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.